don't believe them. Mom and pop. My hip and hop to the hip and the hip and the hip hop. And you don't stop rocking to the bang and the bang and the boogie that. Up! Shout the boogie down. To the rhythm of the boogie and the beat. <laughs> A select but vocal few have criticized shows currently on the UPN and WB networks, claiming they are bringing us back to the days of Amos and Andy, when black comedians were praised and paid for so-called buffoonish routines. Billy J. Green, president of the Beverly Hills Hollywood chapter of the NAACP, was quoted in the Los Angeles Times saying she and others were offended by the groping and rolling and bucking of the eyes. Green went on to call the Wayans brothers the worst offender. The NAACP National Chapter later tried to take back those comments. Do you think that you're being held to a higher standard than, um, than a white comedian, that Kramer could, you know, like, I, I, roll I, his eyes? It's not even a higher standard. It's, we're being held back, period. It's like yeah. everybody got to come in and be, hey, how you doing? I have a lot of money in the bank, and I, <laughs> I, I drive a bin. You can't, you What's, know, it's like we can't be funny. We're, we're, it's like we're kind of handcuffed by you know, certain members of our own but people. But considering our history and that for older people who actually lived through that era where those images were the only images that you saw of, of African Americans, that it's painful for them to see that come back. I can understand for somebody who's, you know, I guess... But if, now we, okay. saying, if we was up here with, 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 with some watermelon, watermelon in, in our, our hand, hand and, and, and tap dancing and getting pie thrown in our face, that's one thing. But for us to be physical comedians and to be, um, you know, accused of being uh, a buffoon, it's, like... it's ridiculous. Who you come to see? Big well, smile. Big smile? I used to see Biggie all the time. Always pass through, he always drive through, always. Like in the summer, always pass through, always. And always holler out the window, you say, Biggie! He holler out, he say, peace, you know? But he was real cool, always pass through, beat the horn, him, the whole Junior Mafia crew, you know? Yeah, and it's, I'ma miss him, he's gonna be well missed, you know? Love him like a brother. What do you think of um, the turnout today? I think it's very beautiful and I think it's tragic. I think it's beautiful to see that a lot of people from this neighborhood have this kind of love for him. I think it's beautiful that these little kids are going to come out here to see him. But I think it's tragic that they, that they have to see him like this. This type of event is usually uh, reserved for political and religious leaders. This is an historical moment here right now. Unfortunately, after Biggie's funeral procession moved on, the relatively peaceful gathering was marred. Six people were arrested for disorderly conduct by New York City police, who also resorted to using pepper spray to calm the crowd. I feel this is not necessary. You know, we be coming here to represent for Biggie, not to start wilding like this. Welcome back to Tupac Shakur in his own words. By March of 1994, Tupac had become something of a household name. However, it wasn't so much for his music or film work as his increasingly high profile run-ins with the law. I had a chance to interview Tupac the night before he was due to be sentenced for assaulting director Alan Hughes, who had fired him from the cast of Menace to Society. At this point, Tupac had become so notorious, he had attracted the attention of a woman with considerable notoriety herself, Madonna, who was interested in meeting with Tupac, sat in and watched this interview from off camera. What do you think you're most known for, your acting, your music, or the controversy that surrounds you? My big mouth. <laughs> my big mouth. I got a big mouth. Can't help it. I talk from my heart. I'm real. You know what I'm saying? Whatever comes, come. Who did you guys come to see today? Uh, mainly Foo Fighters. And uh, Sonic Youth. And Tribe Called Quest. Pump your fist like this. Come on. Come on and pump your fist like this. Come on. Come on and pump your fist like this. Come on. Well, we have some fans here who are, I think, trying to look at the backstage area. Hey, guys. What's going on down here? We're looking for That's celebrities. Good. You're looking for Perry Farrell. <laughs> oh, you're looking for Perry Farrell? Yeah. <laughs> are 
on stage. A lot of people are coming out front to do a little shopping. You can get some food. There's everything from jewelry to clothing to actually you can buy 100% hemp wear. Some people are even getting massages. This is definitely the place to chill out for a little bit before you go back inside for more music. I didn't know anything. I'm going to be, I was really naive coming in here. I didn't know a thing, but now they really just opened me up like, because I think if anyone knew what was going on, there's just no way they wouldn't do something about it. Does music really have the power to change and motivate people to do something? Oh yeah, I mean, that's the way everybody comes together. You know, music is like universal. I mean, we have all kinds of hip hop bands and alternative bands and everybody's just here just to help out Tibet and see their favorite artists. So, you know, it's a good cause. This video is ridiculous. I love this video. I'm coming out. What does that say? I don't know about all that. <laughs> well, he's probably coming outside since Suge's in jail now. That's probably, <laughs> that's what that's about. I'm coming. Looked outside. A lot of people in the hip hop community have said that this incident will change hip hop. This is a really landmark event, tragic event at that, and that the music will probably never be the same. Do you see uh, the direction of Death Row changing? Is there going to be a different type of music put out? Not at all. We're going to do the same thing we've been doing and sell records, like I said before. My main goal is fulfill Tupac's dream. Snoop Doggy Dogg, also known as Calvin Broadus, Sean Abrams, and McKinley Lee were charged with murder after a series of events that took place on August 25, 1993, that ultimately led to the shooting death of 20-year-old Philip Waldemarium. The shooting took place in the Palm section of Los Angeles at Woodbine Park on Vinton Avenue, which is located down the block from the apartment house in which Snoop lived at the time. Outside Snoop's apartment is where eyewitnesses allege that the victim, Walter Merriam, passed by in a car and got into a verbal altercation with Snoop's friend, Abrams, who was hanging out with other members of Snoop's entourage. It appears that Sean Abrams flashed a gang sign at uh, Philip and the two people he was driving with. And as a result, Philip uh, wanted to find out what was going on. No, no, no. Let's be very careful. Gang signs were not exchanged. As best we can tell from the testimony, gang signs were thrown from people in the vehicle, specifically by Mr. Waldemarian, the, whatever the sign is for the uh, Vinton Avenue by yourself hustlers. Based upon the witnesses' statements in their prior testimony, uh, Sean Abrams um, indicated that he was a member of Long Beach Insane, which is a, a crip set. Where was Snoop? positioned at that time was he? Snoop was upstairs in his apartment. He wasn't on the street or involved in this confrontation at that point, that, if you want to call it a confrontation at all. While Snoop openly talks about his past gang affiliation with the Long Beach Crips, his defense discounts any current involvement. However, over the last two years, Snoop has been photographed displaying what could easily be interpreted as gang signage but supposedly is only a representation of his alliance with the rap group, The Dog Pound. The gang membership of any individual really isn't the focus of this case. I, the reason that this case happened has to do more with the mentality on the street. Try to get close and you're bound to get smacked. My little homie Snoop Doggy Dog has got my back. If somebody disrespects you or you perceive somebody disrespects you, you have to do something to show that person that you are on top that they shouldn't be messing with you. Reportedly, after the so-called turf confrontation between Abrams and Walter Merriam, a car chase followed without Snoop Doggy Dog, who, according to the defense, was in his apartment getting ready to go to a recording studio. Sometime after the chase, Snoop got behind the wheel of his 1993 Black Jeep Grand Cherokee with Abrams in the back seat, bodyguard McKinley Lee on the passenger side, and possibly a fourth person. The Jeep ended up passing by Woodbine Park, where Walter Merriam was at a picnic table eating with friends. They were sitting there eating, and it appears that Calvin Brodus and the other two defendants were circling the park. Once the Jeep stopped, the victim, Philip, got up and sort of made a motion to the Jeep, like, hey, what's up? What do you guys want with us? It appears that he was called over by McKinley Lee. At that point, he started walking over. The Jeep doesn't stop here because it sees the people. 
The Jeep stops here because apparently Mr. Waldemarian, according to the evidence, gets up on top of this picnic table and starts flagging the Jeep down, indicating with his hands up, what's up, what's up, and that's what apparently causes the Jeep to stop. At that time, allegedly another verbal altercation took place between Abrams and Waldemarian. It appears that uh, Defendant Lee, McKinley Lee, came out of the car, and by that I mean brought his arm out with the gun at that point, and Philip then turned to run, and at that point the shooting happened. The defense's theory differs, alleging that while standing approximately 10 feet from Snoop's Jeep, Walter Merriam raised his shirt, displaying a gun in his waistband. Mr. Lee saw the gun come out of the waistband and be brought up as though it were going to be fired. They have made allegations that Philip had the gun out. At this point, based upon the evidence I have, I assume that Philip had a gun. And it is possible that Philip may have been reaching for it at the time he was shot. But given the scenario of how this thing actually happened, the claim of self-defense really falls on Philip. Following the shooting, the Jeep driven by Snoop left the scene. All three men would later claim the shooting was in self-defense. I know it wasn't in self-defense. I don't even call it murder. They stole Philip from us. They murdered him. They ambushed him. They sought him out and killed him. The Waldemarian family, who have attended every pretrial hearing, say they are outraged over the success Snoop Dogg has had while out on bail, including winning numerous music industry awards, selling millions of records, and performing the song Murder Was the Case on the 1994 MTV Video Music Awards. Murder was the case that they gave me. He was rehearsing with a coffin for the show. I think that's very much in poor taste because our brother is in one, in a real coffin. Murder was the case is outrageous, but I have news for that. It is, murder is still the case. It's still pending and all of the attempts to dismiss it are out the window. Murder was the case that they gave me. I'm innocent. I'm innocent. called buffoonish routines. Billy J. Green, president of the Beverly Hills Hollywood chapter of the NAACP, was quoted in the Los Angeles Times saying she and others were offended by the groping and rolling and bucking of the eyes. Green went on to call the Wayans brothers the worst offender. The NAACP national chapter later tried to take back those comments. <laughs> Do you think that you're being held to a higher standard than, um, than a white comedian? To the rhythm of the book and the beat. <laughs> a select but vocal few have criticized shows currently on the UPN and WB networks, claiming they are bringing us back to the days of Amos and Andy. Black comedians were praised and paid for so Also believed in mom and pop, not hip and hop to the hip and the hip and the hip hop. And you don't stop. And that Kramer could, you know, like I, I, roll I, his eyes. It's not even a higher standard. It's we're being held back, period. It's yeah. like everybody got to come in and be, hey, how you doing? I have a lot of money in the bank and I, <laughs> I, I, I drive a Benz. You can't, you What's, know, it's like we can't be funny. We're, we're, it's like we're kind of.